After I uploaded my CT703S review video a few weeks ago, many viewers had pointed out that the problem I saw with the 30 MHz bandwidth was actually by design. And also my firmware version is not up to date. So in this video, let's revisit a few of the issues we saw, and we will see if the latest firmware update fixed any of the issues we saw earlier. And before I do the firmware upgrade, let's actually take a look at the bandwidth issue I mentioned earlier. The CT703S is advertised as a 50 MHz bandwidth scope. And when I tested in my last video, I was only able to get around 33 MHz before the display became unstable. So let me actually demonstrate it here. Right now I'm having a 10 MHz signal outputting from my DGE2070, and you can see the signal is displayed on the screen here, and we're at 10 MHz. So if I increase the frequency to 30 MHz, you see no problem. And now I'm going to increase it further, 31, 32, 33, and as soon as I go to 34, you can see that the captured waveform becomes unstable. So that was the issue I saw earlier. But I should have read the manual as it was clearly mentioned that this meter has two modes, normal and fast. Apparently the 50 MHz bandwidth is only achievable in the fast mode, and in the normal mode, it is capped to 30 MHz, just like what we saw here. Anyway, so let's try switching it to fast mode and see how it behaves in that range. So together, I think I have to press menu, and let's see here. Yep, you can see here run mode. Right now we're in normal mode, and I can press it. So now it says to high. And in this mode, you don't see a lot of difference. That's why at first I never noticed what it was supposed to do, and I didn't refer to the manual. But right now, if we start increasing the frequency, as you can see here, right now we're at 33 megahertz, and we can do, let's go to 43. And you can see we're still able to measure that waveform. So let's see how high we can go. 44, 45, 46, 47. Ah. The highest we can measure in this mode is actually only at 46 MHz. So let's uh, move it back to 46. And let's see how well the auto range works in fast mode. Well, as you can see, the auto range obviously is still an issue and doesn't appear to work that well. We'll have to see if the firmware upgrade later changes anything. But for now, let's actually adjust it manually back to where we were here. So let's move it to the center. Let's change the voltage, rather timing. And the voltage here. So there's some aliasing definitely going on. Now we are back to the 46 MHz measurement. So it appears the fast mode indeed improved the bandwidth. And you just saw it was not quite 50 MHz, but it was close enough. And if you do the math according to the manual, the difference between these two modes is directly correlated to the maximum sampling rate difference. In fast mode, the sampling rate is specified at 280 mag samples per second, and in normal mode, the sampling rate is at 200 mag samples per second. So the sampling rate is 40% faster in the fast mode. Since the highest frequency we could measure in normal mode was around 33 MHz, if you do the calculation, 40% increase translates to just above 30 MHz more, which is roughly the 46 MHz bandwidth we saw. Now, I have to say this implementation is really odd, and I can't say I have ever seen this in any oscilloscopes that I have worked with. And according to the manual, the reason for the normal mode is to conserve the battery consumption. And I'm actually curious to see what the current consumption is in fast mode. As they have gone into so much trouble implementing a different mode, just try squeezing in a little bit more performance. In my opinion, I would be happy if they kept the maximum frequency at 30 MHz and called it a 30 MHz scope. Anyway, let's open it up again and check out the current consumption in both modes. All right, I have powered it up again. Let's uh, check out which range we're currently in here. Let's go to menu. Ah, you can see we're back to normal range again. So it doesn't appear that the range selection here persists between boots, and we'll have to change it again here. So let's change it to high. So we're at 360 milliamps. And what was the number before? Let's change it back. And let's change the run mode to normal. 
Okay, so the difference is really not that big. It's only like 50 milliamps. Anyway, as you saw, the current consumption difference was really just about less than 20%. And the runtime probably would have been 9 hours if you're enabling the high bandwidth mode because we have a 3.4 amp hour battery here. Yeah, so in this normal mode, you do get probably 2 hours extra runtime. But it's really inconvenient as you have to change it every single time you want to go to the 50 MHz bandwidth. If I were designing a scope, I would probably kept it at either 30 MHz or 50 MHz and not go into the trouble of implementing a separate range for these two different frequency bandwidth. And the next issue I mentioned was that I could not find the rail button while I was testing out the resistance and the capacitance. As many of you have mentioned, the rail button is right here, staring back at me. Well, in this case, the power button has a dual purpose, and it also serves as a rail button. So I stand corrected for saying there was no relative mode. But if I were designing the meter, I would probably put it on a different button because it's just not very obvious from this red background, and it's not lit up, so you can't really see the labeling that well. Anyway, let me quickly demonstrate here. So let me short out the leads. And let's press the rail button. Yep, no issues. Another thing mentioned by some is that towards the end of the charging cycle, the power button flickers. And yes, I can confirm this. As you can see in this clip I took earlier, as one of the viewers mentioned, this is probably just the charging protection circuitry kicking in on the battery towards the end. It is a bit annoying, but it shouldn't really be any issue. Next, I'm going to update the firmware. But before we do that, let's take a look at the current firmware level here. So for that, I'm going to check. Let's see here. As you can see, currently we're at version 1.2.8. All right, let's give it a try. According to the manual, I have to press both the F1 and power key together. Yep, and now we're in this disk driver mode. So hopefully we can just plug it in and you should recognize it as a flash drive here. And you can see we actually recognize it. So let me go here. I should be able to drag the firmware over to the firmware folder here. So let's give it a try here. Now I have two here because one is for 703S, the other one is for 702, which we'll do a little bit later. But now let's drag the 703 I need to be careful here. This is a version 1.3.8. So let's drag it here. And it's being copied over. So I'm not seeing any difference here just yet. Ah, now it's uh, upgrading. All right, seems that the upgrade is done. Let's uh, try to see if we can power it up again. And let's go back to the cursor here. Sorry, let's go back to the menu here and let's verify the version. Yep, it's 1.3.8. While we're here, let's also upgrade the 702S. It should be the same procedure here. And let's plug in the USB. Okay. So let's drag the 702 to the firmware folder here. And let's observe on the screen here. All right, now I have parted it up again. And let's take a look. Here I'm at 33 micros, and let's increase it to 34. And we have the same issue because right now we're in the normal mode. So let's actually go to, let's see here the fast mode. So now we're in the fast mode. Let's increase it to 43 megahertz, 44 megahertz, 45, 46, 47. 
So it's essentially the same as what we have seen before. Of course, we're not expecting any difference because that is fundamentally limited by the sampling right here. So now let's actually take a look at the auto acquisition here to see if they fixed the issue we saw earlier. And it's taking its time. Wow, it's taking quite a bit of time. Nope, as you see here, the issue remains. We were not able to auto acquire that 46 megahertz signal. So let's manually adjust it. And let me reduce the frequency a little bit and let's see if we still have that offset error when we are doing the auto acquisition. So let's uh, go back to now one megahertz and let's try doing the auto acquire again. Yeah, so the same issue remains. So it doesn't seem that the firmware upgrade had fixed any of the issues that we saw earlier on this 703S. I'm sure the firmware upgrade fixed some issues, but just not the issues that we're seeing here. And very briefly on the 702S after the upgrade, let's power it up and see if we are able to remember the last power on state. So if you recall, prior to the version upgrade, we were not able to remember the last power on state. If I switch to the multimeter mode next time, it will return to the oscilloscope mode. So let's actually change it to multimeter mode. And let's power it off. And let's power it on. Aha, at least they have fixed that issue. So now we can actually remember the last power on state which is excellent. Unfortunately, I don't recall which firmware version that was on, but uh, let's take a look at the current firmware version. And we're at 1.0358. All right, I hope this video cleared up things a little bit. And if you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching, and I will catch up with you next time.